Hi everyone, welcome back to L'Amore La Musique. I have conscripted my husband to watch both children so I actually get a moment to film unencumbered. Today's video is a request I've been getting over probably the last month. I guess it's a request I've received periodically throughout the years. It's always a video I've been meaning to do and now is really a good time to do it, I think, given the fact that inflation is a very real issue that people are experiencing in their day day lives in the United States and around the world, obviously. And I also think that it's a point in time in the evolution of green beauty where people are maybe coming full circle. Green beauty was new in, in, in its infancy, very exciting. The field exploded. There's been this big proliferation. People went really maximalist. <laughs> Sorry that you can hear my screaming child. I think there's been a real desire to return to basics. And so you don't need to spend a lot of money to still have a high quality personal care experience. And maybe that's one of the benefits of the fields proliferating is that there are more options at lots of different price points. So today I have recommendations in skincare, makeup, and hair and body to some extent. I don't have recommendations for like every category. Sometimes I have general brand recommendations and sometimes more specific products. A spin-off video from this was going to be best, best investments, best ways to allocate money for products that might not necessarily be budget friendly, but that are extremely multi-purpose and that you would get tons and tons of use out of that in my opinion make really worthwhile investments in a high quality beauty product so more of like that capsule wardrobe capsule beauty type of approach but today it's kind of strictly budget taking into account that budget is subjective to some people a $20 oil cleanser is still gonna be really expensive so this is my take on budget I guess and you're talking to someone that has spent a lot of money on beauty products over the course of my life my top three recommendations actually have nothing to do with products and they are very budget friendly and they will absolutely impact your physical appearance, your skin condition if you're dealing with any kind of problem skin, whether it's congestion, acne, pigmentation, eczema, texture, all of it. I really want to encourage people to look into the benefits of taking an internal vitamin E supplement. I talked about this in, I think my best of beauty 2021. And I also did a whole video on Patreon about in the new supplement routines. I've been self-directed on over the last six months and the insanely positive results I've seen. I take the Mitolife vitamin E, which is a very, very high quality one. It's in an MCT oil base. You don't have to take this one. I started taking one capsule of this a day and within a week, jaw and congestion I had had for the last three years completely cleared up, completely gone. Texture of my skin started changing. I really had to use no products. My skin started to really take care of itself. And then there have been other far-reaching health benefits to taking internal vitamin E. It can really positively impact your menstrual cycle. If you experience ovulatory pain like I did uh, and bloating, or if you have PMS, cramps when you start bleeding, all of that, uh, this is just a life-changing type of of supplement. I do have a discount code on this, Lamour, L-A-M-O-U-R for 15% off. And I think with that, it breaks down to make this bottle, I think $46 spread out over two months if you take one capsule a day. So in my opinion, that's pretty budget friendly. The next recommendation is to, again, do your own research into red light therapy. Any sort of skin concern, I think, can benefit from red light therapy. This is something I had started on and off in 2017. I've gotten away from it, but now I'm getting back into it. You do not have to buy an expensive red light LED panel like Juve, which is a complete, complete ripoff. You can literally spend 30, 35 max $40 and get yourself a clamp like this and a red heat lamp bulb, which are 10 to $15. This is $15 uh, and you have yourself a very, very inexpensive red light setup. I have this and the bulb that I have used in the past and need to repurchase myself. Linked on my Amazon shop front, which I recently put an Amazon shop front together with lots of different recommendations across many categories, books, 
radical health and beauty, toddler, baby, um, wish list, postpartum, like tie up a bunch of lists curated on there. So I'll make sure and link that uh, shop front down below. The research on red light is just really extensive, really compelling. Uh, I could recommend Mark Sloan's book on red light therapy, which is in my queue to read. Uh, there's so many good podcasts out there on it um, and you can do it for really inexpensive. My last recommendation, extremely budget friendly that will have profound impacts on your health and ergo your physical appearance are therapeutic baths. I first got into therapeutic baths vis-a-vis -vis Linda Lancaster's book, Harmonic Healing. This really defined my first postpartum period in 2019. I got really into taking baths and the positive impacts that it was bringing to my health and my vitality and my life, and I've gotten back into them this postpartum. These baths require very, very inexpensive household items like sea salt baking soda, apple cider vinegar. I just finished another Mark Sloan book called Bath Bombs and Balneotherapy. Great little quick read about the benefits of carbonated baths, uh, making your own bath bombs, uh, just basically making therapeutic bath combinations, and the products are really cheap. So if you don't have a bathtub, you can also simulate the effect through a foot bath if you have just like a large bowl or vessel of some sort to soak your feet in, you can still get the benefits of, of therapeutic baths, which are really whole body and will be reflected in your skin. Okay, now with those three key recommendations out of the way, let's talk about some skincare that will not break the bank. Even though I've tried so many products and layering routines, I mean, you name it, over the last 10, 12 years, at the end of the day, a skincare routine really needs to be extremely, extremely simple, and most people will reap massive benefits by having a max of three, maybe four products if you want to wear an SPF in their routine. So you need some sort of cleanser. I am a big proponent of oil cleansing. There's a lot of expensive oil cleansers on the market. I would say you could use something extremely simple like a pure jojoba oil. This one is from Maker and Merchant, eight fluid ounces. Other good budget-friendly oil cleanser recommendations would be the Evan Healy oil cleanser, which I believe is $24. It does have some essential oils in it, so if you want a little bit more of an experience. And then Badger, they're, I think they're most well-known for their eco uh, physical SPFs. They do a suite of cleansing oils. They do an unscented one without essential oils. They do a sea buckthorn, a rose. So for example, if you've been curious about the living libations, cleansing oils but they're a little out of your price range go ahead and check out the badger cleansing oils now i will say the badger and the evan healy do use sunflower oil which some people have issues with but when you go up in price to the more expensive cleansing oils then you're going to get something like a paloma from earthwise which uses oils that you don't even really wanna rinse off your skin as a cleanser. So I do think it's possible to find high quality cleansing oils at a much lower price point, but they're not gonna be those most desired oils, which is not necessarily a problem. And that's why I think just a pure jojoba oil is wonderful. Jojoba oil is, works for most people, very closely mimics the skin sebum, great, easy option. Now, if you want a second cleanse or you're someone that does not wanna oil cleanse at all, I would really recommend a facial cleansing bar of soap. It can, I feel like people can have a little bit of trepidation to use a bar of soap to cleanse their skin, but trust me, if you find the right one, they are absolutely beautiful. And of course, I'm gonna recommend Osmia for this. I think they have three in their range, the black clay facial soap, if you're more combination, oily, or even normal, I would say, because I love that one. They have a pumpkin, uh, which I think is a little bit clarifying, and they have a, like a moisturizing, um, cleansing bar of cleansing soap. To make them last longer, you can just cut off little slivers of it and use that to wash your face. And I really think that that's the way to go to get the most bang for your buck. Another brand I could recommend, it's very old school, is the brand Cebu. They're based around sea buckthorn oil. Used to be really popular back in the day in Eco Beauty YouTube land. Vitacost used to carry them and I, I remembered them looked them up and they still exist as a brand. So I could point you in that direction to go see if something there would be of interest. I also wanted to mention the brand Coco Kind, which you can get at Target. You can also shop directly from their website and they have very nicely priced skincare. 
Some of it I think is a, could be a little bit disruptive, some of the creams and serums, um, but they have, this is not it, this is from Maker and Merchant, but just a pure rose hydrosol. They do an organic rose hydrosol that's $16. It's even cheaper than the Evan Healy hydrosols. In terms of a toner, if you wanna remove an oil, refresh throughout the day, most skins can tolerate rose. It's not gonna be too clarifying. The Maker and Merchant one I like as well, but the Coco Kind one is even less expensive. One of the most multi-purpose products that again, I think almost all skins, all ages can benefit from is Manuka Honey, Manuka Honey. I would really recommend this brand Onuku. I have the 15 plus UMF and it's $35. It's often on sale, which can seem kind of steep, but this would be a cleanser and a treatment product, which is extremely affordable for something that's so multi-purpose and so effective. So say you're taking your therapeutic bath and you want to have a mask on, you use Manuka Honey. Say you want a second cleanse after an oil cleanse, Manuka Honey. You can ingest it. If you're feeling ill, you can take a teaspoon and it's just like a wonderful product to have. The quality of this is amazing. I will say that compared to the Activist Manuka in this month's Beauty Heroes box, that one is double the price. It is a little bit more tingly, so one could argue it's a bit more active, but I absolutely love this one. Uh, it's 515 MGOs. I think the activist one in the metal tube is 850, but you know I see great results with pretty much any Manuka honey that I use. So I wanted to give you that as a brand option. Another type of product I think that's great is a multi-purpose balm stick. This was gifted to me in PR a couple of years ago. I don't know anything about the brand. It's called uh, Sade Baron the Moi Beauty Balm and I've been using it and, and really liking it. But Coco Kind does a matcha beauty balm stick that I think would serve exactly the same purpose. It has three ingredients and these can be lip balms. You can use these as an eye balm, cuticle balm. I've used this as an all over face balm in a pinch and I think it's fantastic. So a product like this, really indispensable. Something that I think is a very affordable eye care product, I just started using it. this, it's the One Love Organics Botanical E Eye Balm. Now this little jar is I think 42, maybe $48, but for an eye product, that's actually extremely affordable in my opinion. If you're used to the 70, 80, 100, $200 price tags of, eye oil serums or eye creams in Eco Beauty. Most of them do absolutely nothing in my opinion. If you are wanting an eye balm and you want you know, quite a bit of moisture under the eyes, I can really recommend this. I prefer it to the eye oil roller ball. Even I liked that too though by One Love Organics and I used that whole thing up. So. All right, let's end there with skincare. I did pull some ball, expensive balms because I do think a balm is one of the best investments you can, like a, a pot of balm, uh, because you can use this in your hair, on your skin. Um, you could use it as a face cleanser too if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm gonna save that for this, this follow-up video and let's move on to some affordable makeup recommendations. If you're looking to streamline and budget, a tinted SPF daytime product is really the way to go. That way you don't need a separate SPF and a base layer. Uh, well People has recently undergone yet another rebrand. It's not gonna be to everybody's liking because now the products are made in China, which before they were made, I think primarily in Italy. They have a tinted SPF product that I think would be a good price point for a lot of people. It's somewhere between 20 and $30. Most other tinted SPFs in Eco Beauty are gonna be upwards of 40 to $50. I did also wanna say in the skincare category, I notably did not mention the brand Acure, which I will probably get questions on because they're pretty well known in the space. I used to use Acure products back in the day, but they really declined in quality in my experience. And there was a big kind of hullabaloo about how they were sourcing ingredients and being misleading about product labeling, the ingredients list and things like that. So I just kind of wrote them off to be honest because they were lying about some of their formulations and sourcing and business practices. So in my mind, not necessarily a brand that no matter how cheap they are, that I would really want to give my business to. Perhaps that's changed. If anyone cares to enlighten me, I'm 
open to I'm open to hearing. Well People I think is a great option. You can get them at Target. Uh, I recently picked up the Supernatural bronzer stick. I think this was $20. Again, not a super cheap price point, but I think key investment in some moderately priced high quality eco makeup. That would be my approach on a budget. So I'm liking this quite a bit. I also wanted to mention the brand Pacifica for mascaras in particular. I think if you're looking for an affordable mascara, I mean, well, people does mascara too. Pacifica is even less expensive and I've heard decent things about them. Some people also really like the Burt's Bees mascara as an option. Mascara is exceedingly personal so someone's gonna hate it and someone's gonna love it that's just the way it is wanted to just mention those as brand options um another brand you could look into is i think it's pronounced han h-a-n cosmetics for cream cheek color i think they do some nice bronzers i they have really good word of mouth and the price point is i think similar to well people for liquid liner i'm currently using Ilia and natasha denona which are not budget friendly at all but the one I used for years and years and years and years is Zuzu Lux. I think it's around $15. It is a little difficult to use if you're a beginner liquid liner user, but I think it's a really great option. Uh, the quality is great, has good lasting power, good formulation. So that would be what I would recommend in that department. Okay, this is not gonna seem on the face of it like a budget option, but in my opinion, it really is please go check out the Natasha Denona mini palettes. And again, I'm sorry, I guess this is not an eco brand, but I had to throw it in because I just think that if you're looking for something fun to liven up your makeup routine that is affordable, these little mini palettes are $25. Very rarely are you even gonna hit pan on an eyeshadow. And if you just want something like fun toppers, some, some sparkles, some shimmer, something new and interesting as you know a seasonal, uh, pleasure. I think these are wonderful. I got this one for Valentine's Day. It was a color story I loved. $25 and you can use some of them as blushes, some of them as inner corner highlights for fun, countless looks you can do. Definitely budget friendly if you consider how many ways you can use it and how far a product like this would really go. All right, let's end with some hair and body recommendations. And I think this is actually where most people's interest might lie. I got so many requests, questions about body wash because all, so many of the body washes in Eco Beauty are expensive, and in my opinion, almost none of them are worth it. Probably the best one I've found is the Ment Do All Wash. I've repurchased that. I'm currently using the Mukti body wash, which I like. But truth be told, I think a body wash is completely not necessary at all. And there are so many brands that make beautiful soaps that I think you can have a gorgeous, like bath or shower experience. My favorites are Unearth Malie. This brand makes gorgeous soaps, so I would recommend checking them out. Marie's brand, Sunny Ruckus. I haven't tried them, but I love to mention and support her in any way I can as an artisanal soap maker. A really budget would be the Dr. Bronner's bars of soap. I think they're $5.99. They last a long time. We went through a couple bars of them, the lavender and the peppermint. I think they're great. As far as body care, body moisturizing, unpopular opinion is that you don't really need to be moisturizing your skin much, if at all. <laughs> Similar to how you get into these uh, circular traps with too much skincare. If you're doing a lot of body exfoliating and body oiling, which I obviously has a place and I love, I still love using high quality oils and balms, less lotions. I really don't use any creams or lotions much at all. If you want to go that route, my recommendation is not budget. It's CV Skin Labs. Dr. Bronner's also does make a body lotion for something a little bit more affordable. But my body oil recommendation that is budget friendly and is amazing is the Body Suticles Calendula Body Oil. I was gifted a bottle of this during my first postpartum and I've always meant to repurchase it because it, I would, I was reaching for that above and beyond, you know, these $80, $90 body oils. Shampoo and conditioner is another pretty fraught category because 
this in my opinion this is one of the categories where you kind of do get what you pay for i've tried like over the years everything that whole foods has to offer alafia which is a more affordable i'm blanking on some of the other brands where you can get a more affordable type of shampoo i tend to really drop money on shampoos and conditioners right now i'm loving the mukti shampoo and conditioner not budget friendly so for a budget recommendation I'm going to suggest a shampoo bar, even though I personally don't like these that much. Um, the most affordable one is probably High Bar, and I have heard good things about it. I just think if you have long hair, they're difficult to use. I don't know. I, I have done so much DIY with my hair. When I first got into Eco Beauty, I was doing like apple cider vinegar washes. I was washing my scalp with baking soda. In my opinion, you want a good shampoo and conditioner. High Bar, a Body Suisse, and Iuna all make shampoo bars. They're a Body Suisse and Iuna are not budget friendly, but they may be if you get more use out of the shampoo bar than you would a plastic bottle of shampoo, right? That's kind of an open category. If people have, you know, recommendations, feel free to, to share them below. But again, it's like mascara. Hair is ex extremely, extremely personal. Deodorant, again, not a great category. I think it's challenging. I would say, honestly, try the brand Native, which is carried at Target. Uh, they also carry Schmitz. They're not going to be perfect and they're not going to be creme de la creme, but I think they're going to be good enough. And deodorant is not something, in my opinion, that's really worth, I mean, maybe wean off trying to use it so much, I guess I would say, and then you won't won't really have a need for it. Currently using actually a brand I did want to mention, the Ingredients Deodorant Spray. So far so good. It's I've been testing it only a short amount of time. Remains to be seen, but overall I did want to mention the brand Ingredients as a really nice lower limit to what the boutique style Eco Beauty carries. So Beauty Heroes does carry this. It's one of their most affordable lines. And I can honestly say I have loved every single thing I've tried. I was so surprised when this box blew me away in August. Uh, this is the body oil. I love it. The deodorant spray, the nasal spray. Uh, what else have I tried? Uh, the face serum is is okay. It's probably not something I would purchase again, but I did enjoy getting to use it. It doesn't have hyaluronic acid, which is huge in my book. But yeah, I, I think the brand is super solid and it's not budget per se, but I would say it's an affordable for a very high quality beauty experience. The only other thing to mention would be dental care. I had been using Risewell for quite a long time. I don't really know how many people think $12 is budget friendly for a thing of, of toothpaste. I am now evaluating the role of glycerin in toothpaste, so I'm exploring some other brands. I'm currently using the Rupalms Dental Soap, but I'm kind of going through it quickly, so I'm not sure I would consider it a budget option. I do like it. There's some other brands of like tooth powders and tooth soap style products that I'm gonna try, but it's gonna boil down to the user experience and how much of a worthwhile investment, I guess I would say, the alternative dental care is. Okay, the last product that I just thought of to end on and I also realized that when I was talking about jojoba oil I didn't mention desert essence organic jojoba oil which was a staple in my routine I was always using that to remove eye makeup so I would have to mention that as well desert essence organic jojoba oil it is packaged in plastic so I think the maker and merchant jojoba oil is kind of a step up from the desert essence but really really budget would be the desert essence organic jojoba oil um, I wanted to mention the Briotech topical skin spray a good budget recommendation again because of the multi-purpose nature and you can use this as skincare especially if you're dealing with an acute skin condition like eczema. I think I have this linked on my Amazon shop as well, but I have smaller spray bottles that you can decant it into. Functions as a hand sanitizer, uh, it's hypochlorous acid, so it just has tons and tons of benefits to the skin and the body overall. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of other things I didn't mention. We're almost done. I can't talk about soaps without mentioning Lamore Mongolia. I think soap is just kind of inherently budget Friendly. I mean, not all of them. I've seen some bars of soap that are really quite expensive, but you know, these are $10 a bar. They last quite a long time. I use them on my kids. This is the Yak's Milk Soap, and this is the Nettle Soap. This one I don't use on the kids. I use that. I would use that one for myself. The Yak's Milk Soap, the Sheep Tail Fat Soap, the Children's Soap. Uh, so, so, so good. 
And then this is kind of a family body care recommendation, the Babo Botanical Sensitive Baby Fragrance-Free Shampoo and Wash. Um, I think this is $30 for 16 fluid ounces, but it lasts for ever. I do a separate bubble bath, which is not necessary at all, also by Babo, but this is what I use to do hair washing if I need to. And I also keep a bottle of this by my bathtub, so if I need to do like a quick wash of myself, just a pump of this is wonderful. It's really gentle. And then another thing I use on the kids that I think is a nice budget body care recommendation is the Dr. Bronner's Unscented Organic Magic Balm. I use this on chapped cheeks, chapped areas of the skin, diaper rash, uh, any sort of chafed area on babies or kids. I get this in Target orders that I place. Yeah, the ingredients are, are really good and minimal. It's just avocado oil, jojoba, beeswax, coconut oil, olive oil, and hemp seed oil. And so let's end on this note. I hope you enjoyed hearing about some of these, what I hope you will consider to be budget recommendations and brand recommendations. Some things for you to explore and see how they might fit into your own life. Thank you guys so much for watching. If I have any discount codes, I do have some affiliate links for some of the stuff. So if that's a way you would like to support my work, if you got value from this video, I would definitely appreciate it. I am very active on my Patreon account. I do bonus videos, bonus podcasts, live Q&A, and weekly get ready with me's over there. There's different tiers that you can join depending on how much time or inclination you have to consume beauty related content. Um, I'm trying to be more active on Instagram as well. I'm revamping my website. I'm still doing my podcast in the background, and I'll just have all the ways that you can find me and stay in touch below. Please drop a comment. Even if you just wanna say hi, I'd love to hear from you. I will look forward to seeing you guys in my next video, which will hopefully be before too long. Take care, bye.